Hey guys, how's it going? Justin here with Practically Squared. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, what I wanted to bring you is our long-awaited video on the Dead Air Mask HD. The Dead Air Mask is a rimfire suppressor from Dead Air. It was first introduced in 2015-2016 timeframe, so it's been on the market for quite a while, and it's actually surprisingly grown in popularity. If you ask most suppressor enthusiasts what their favorite rimfire suppressor is, chances are one of the ones that's going to come up, if not the first, is going to be the Dead Air Mask. The Dead Air Mask is a super popular rimfire suppressor for good reason. It packs a lot of really good features, as we're going to cover today. The purpose of today's video is to go over this can. We're going to get you up to speed with some of the pros and cons of the can. We'll talk overall feature set and all that stuff. I'll share my opinions and kind of comparing it to some other cans. Also, later in the video, we'll have some sound footage so you guys can kind of hear how this sounds. No decibel testing today, but uh, just going over the can and getting you guys up to speed with it and getting you guys to listen to it a little bit. Now, before we get any further in the video, I have a couple housekeeping notes I got to hit you with. The first one is going to be, if you guys enjoy the content, definitely feel free to head over to Instagram and give our channel Practically Squared or a page Practically Squared a follow over there. I do these videos purely for education and entertainment purposes. So any support, the likes, the subscribes, going over to Instagram, giving us a follow, all that stuff, it helps me immensely and and encourages me to make more content. So all the support means the world to me. The second thing I got to hit you with is I try to make these videos un as unbiased as possible. However, in this video, I do have a little bit of product affiliation I want to shed a light on. And that is going to be that I got a little bit of a discount on this can through Dead Air. I didn't want to get the can for free. However, I did accept a offer for a discount on a product and I chose the mask to get because I've been meaning to pick one of these up for a while. So I did get a little bit of a discount on this can from Dead Air. Shouldn't affect my opinion too much. I've shot masks for years and years and my opinion has been out there on the internet. However, just full transparency, I did get a discount on this can. Now, moving forward, let's get into the video. So going over some basic specifications of the Dead Air mask. The Dead Air mask is going to come in at 5.1 inches overall length. It's going to be around a one inch diameter tube. It's going to weigh in at 6.6 .6 ounces. It features a stainless steel 17.4 heat treated baffle stack. It is a K style baffle, which I'll roll up a picture on the screen to show. The main advantage to a 17.4 baffle is going to be, it's going to give you the full auto capability, which to most people that doesn't really apply, but the real selling point to most people is going to be the cleaning methods. So to clean this can, what I recommend is taking your baffles out and throwing your baffles in either a wet tumbler or, or ultrasonic cleaner, adding a little bit of your favorite solvent, I prefer Dawn dish soap, and letting it run a cycle for a couple hours. Your baffles are going to come out really clean. I'm sure most of you guys are aware, 22 pistols, 22 rifles are notoriously dirty, and the cans get even dirtier, if that can even be a thing. They're super, super filthy, and you got to take these things apart and clean them. I recommend about every 500 to 1,000 rounds. Every range trip, take your baffles out, toss them in a wet tumbler, whatever you choose to do. It's going to be really easy. The advantage to that over an aluminum baffle can, which is generally going to be significantly lighter than this, is that the aluminum baffle cans, your cleaning methods are going to be far limited. Most guys are going to have to end up hand cleaning those baffles, which becomes a giant pain in the ass. That's why I personally won't buy a 22 suppressor that doesn't feature 74 baffles for that very reason. So moving along, some other really nice things about the mask is the way they kind of styled this thing. They really mimicked it uh, along the lines of their Sandman line of rifle suppressors, which is really new, unique and it's a really a good looking can. Also, it's a pretty cool name, pretty clever, obviously pre-COVID and all the mask bullshit that we had to deal with. But nonetheless, a mask for a suppressor name, I think is a pretty genius name. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's became super popular. Now, that's kind of a little bit of a joke because the real reason why this can's become so popular over the years is because of its performance. So with 22 suppressors, a phenomenon that's really apparent is going to be the first round pop phenomenon. If you're not familiar with what that is, it basically means that your first round is going to have a pop to it, and then it's going to quiet down after that. In the case of a rimfire suppressor, first round pop is usually really noticeable because of how well the suppressors do. 22 is generally naturally a pretty quiet round, not so much out of a pistol, more so out of a rifle. But with a 22 suppressor, you could get these things down 
easily sub 120 decibels. Generally, with a good bolt gun and subsonic ammo, you're well under the, the 112, 110 range, depending on what you're shooting and all that stuff. Tons of variables there. But these things get really, really quiet. So any sort of difference in terms of that first round to the subsequent rounds, that atmosphere kind of burning up in there and your can getting purged out, you could pick up on it. Now, the unique thing that the mask has is the way the baffles are designed, it gets almost no first round pop. If you meter this can, you might pick up a decibel or so, but to the human ear, nobody can really tell a difference. And even to most meters, they're generally isn't even a decibel of difference there. So it is really amazing how well dead air did with the first round pop mitigation. That's something that rimfire suppressors to this day are still plagued with. And obviously manufacturers have to work around patents and all that stuff. So they can't all just copy the way dead air did it, but it's really unique and it's a really good job. The other cans out there that have impressed me for first round pop, the biggest one that's going to come to mind is the rugged Oculus. The rugged Oculus is a really good can. The, We'll kind of compare it more to this later in the video. However, the mask does a really great job. And even though the Oculus is pretty good at first round pop, the mask is by far the best can I've ever heard in terms of first round pop, especially on a pistol, which is where it really, really becomes apparent. So moving along, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be the weight. So the weight is probably the biggest drawback that people will say. This can comes in at 6.6 .6 ounces, which is still relatively light for a suppressor, but whenever you could get some of those aluminum offerings that are gonna weigh, you know, three or four ounces or so, and even some offerings with stainless steel baffles, you could get down into the five ounce range. With something like this, you're getting a little bit more weight. Now it's kind of a give and take. You're getting a 22 suppressor or a rimfire suppressor generally for the performance aspect. And one of the biggest performance aspects is gonna be that first round pop. And that's the point that I would argue. I haven't found a lightweight suppressor that does as good of a job as, at this as first round pop. The only can that I could even say that would come to mind would be something like the old AAC Element 2, which if you're not familiar with that, there's tons of threads out there talking about that can. The AAC Element 2 was really a good can. The downside to it was it featured a non-shielded baffle stack, which was something that they used to do back in the day. And the disadvantage to that is whenever you get to take it apart to clean it, all your baffles would stick to the inner tube. With something like this mask, it's a more modern design can. So you are getting a little bit more weight being that you have that tube and tube structure, but the advantage is you pop off the end cap and your baffles for the most part slide out. Maybe a little tap, but with something like that old element, you had to screw in a pusher tool and actually screw push them out. It was a giant pain in the ass. So you are getting a little bit heavier weight with this, but you're getting a can that's really easy to take apart and clean, which I can't stress enough. Whenever you actually live with a can, taking it apart and cleaning it is a really, really big deal. It's something that you should look for when you're looking for a 22 can. So I think I've done enough yapping. I think we should take a break. We should go out to the range. I'll shoot this can on a couple different hosts, and then we'll come back. We'll kind of compare this to some other stuff, maybe give you guys some closing thoughts on it and wrap the video up. So I'll see you guys in a minute. So let's talk about the performance of the mask. So as we stated a bunch of times in this video, first round pop is super phenomenal on the mask. It does a really, really good job at that. In terms of giving you guys a nuts and bolts comparison to other cans, I don't necessarily have any videos 
or decibel metering or anything like that to share with you guys, but just giving you guys my pure opinion and shooting a lot of cans over the years. I think the mask is up there with the best. As far as 22 cans, rimfire cans more specifically, I should say, there's a lot of good ones out there. The mask is the first one that's going to come to mind. I'm also a really big fan of the rugged Oculus. I also really do like the Thunder Beast Takedown 22. And then we can't forget the Silencer Co. Switchback. Those are probably the couple rimfire suppressors that I would say are stuff that I recommend on a regular basis. They all serve their purpose. They're all really, really good cans. There's a ton of other good rimfire cans out there on the market. But generally, the way I tell people is if you want a dedicated rifle can, your option is going to be the switchback or the mask. The Oculus does a really, really good job on there. But my favorite bolt action rimfire can is going to be that switchback. That switchback is phenomenal. But the mask is so, so close to it. And then whenever we go over to talking about on a pistol, my favorite can on a pistol is going to be the mask, followed by the Oculus in a close second. So, you know, whichever route you go, you're going to be happy if you got an Oculus, you're going to be happy if you got a mask. If you get a switchback, it does a pretty decent job at a pistol, but it's not nearly as good as the Oculus or the mask in my personal opinion. So it really kind of comes down to your use. I don't think you could go wrong with either of those three and something like the Thunder Beast does a really good job all around as well, but it's not quite up there in my personal opinion with the other three that we were talking about. If you want modularity, you want a short little can, but you go a little bit longer, the Oculus is a really solid option. If you're after that ultimate suppression on a rifle, the switchback is probably going to be the option. If you're after an all-around performer on pistols and rifles, and it's not going to be a slouch and you're not going to be disappointed with it, I think the mask is a super solid option. It all around does a really good job no matter what you throw it on. We haven't really talked about it in the video because I feel it's a minor point, but this thing is rated for stuff like 5.728 center fire, and you could also run your, your rimfire stuff like 17... Uh, WSM and 17 HMR and stuff like that. So there's multiple caliber options. I feel like most people are going to run 22 through this, but if you do want to throw it on your 5.7 or your 17 HMR or whatever, know that you do have the ability to do that. And this is a full auto rated can. So if you do have the access to full auto, or in my case, a binary 1022, then go ahead and let her eat and have fun with it. It's a really good can. It's built really well, and it's backed by a company, Dead Air, who stands behind their product. If you ever have an issue, Dead Air is one of those companies like Silence or Kevin, like Rugged, and like Thunder Beast for that matter, that's going to take care of you. I've had a lot of conversations with some guys over at Dead Air. Mike Pappas is a really good dude, and they're really good people. They're super invested in the industry, and I feel like they keep putting out really good products. So I think I've said all that I could say about the Dead Air Mask. It's a super solid can, and I feel like if you're in the market for one and it fits your personal needs, then I would give it the thumbs up to go ahead and grab one. To date, in this can, I've probably put, I don't know, two to 3,000 rounds through it, and I've had it for a couple months. I went out and really did kind of a big demo day on it. I've shot mass over the years. I've shot tons of mass over the years. I have a good buddy who has one. I have a couple buddies who have them, for that matter. And they're super, super solid cans, and I'm happy that I have one now in my collection. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up. It would help us out a lot. I make these videos for your entertainment and education purposes, so all the support means the world to me. Guys, as always, remember to train hard, shoot fast, and most importantly, be safe. God bless.